In today's episode, I'm going to show you a very simple method for making picture frames. To start out, I'm going to cut the artwork that's going into the frame on the CNC machine. I'm making the panel out of quarter inch Baltic birch plywood because I like the look of the layers when I use a 30 degree V-bit. The frame is made for artwork that is 11 by 14, so I begin by cutting the plywood scrap to size. To hold the panel down while cutting the design, I like to use double sided tape. The machine is removing quite a bit of material, so I need multiple strips just to make sure it doesn't move. The bit that I'm using in my CNC machine is a 30 degree V-bit and it was sent to me by Bits and Bits Company. It does an excellent job in cutting fine detail and it also left a very clean surface. If you're interested in picking one of these up, I'll have a link in the description below and I also have a 15% off coupon. With the artwork out of the way, I began working on the frame. I'm making two of these frames because one of them will be going to my mom for her Mother's Day gift. One is made out of walnut, and the other one is made out of cherry. The frame pieces have a final width of one and a half inches, so luckily I was able to get all four pieces just out of one strip of lumber. Before milling the lumber, I often rip the pieces close to their final width to help reduce the amount of time it's going to take at the joiner to get one face flat. Next, I start the milling process and that begins with jointing one face and one edge, followed by planing the pieces to the final thickness of 3 quarters of an inch. Next, I cut the pieces to a width of 1.5 inches at the table saw. The glass, artwork, and backer board set in a half inch rabbit that's on the edge of the frame pieces. There are several ways to cut these rabbits, but I often use a rabbiting bit at the router table but you can also use your table saw if you prefer. I will make several passes to remove the waste to prevent tear out. After each pass, I'll slowly raise the bit until I reach a final depth of a half inch. The final step is to cut the miters. The first step is to set your miter gauge to 45 degrees and make a test cut. With one end cleaned up on the pieces, I measure 13 inches for the top and bottom pieces and make a mark. Next, I transfer my mark to the back side of the pieces so that I can line it up with the blade. I move the stop block over and butt it right up against the piece. The most important part in cutting these frames is that they need to be the same length on the top and the bottom as well as the two side pieces. The top and the bottom are 13 inches and the sides are 16 inches. Now I can reset the stop block for 16 inches and cut the two side pieces. There's several different methods for reinforcing miters and I've covered them in previous videos. You can use splines, biscuits, dominoes, and all kinds of other ways. For this video, I used my Festool domino since it was fast and easy. I made a mark on each corner and began cutting the slots with the domino set to plunge about 12 millimeters. Since the depth is only 12 millimeters and I'm using 30 millimeter dominoes, I had to remove a little bit of waste off of the end of each of the dominoes. And I cut the excess off just using my pull saw. To glue up the frame, I apply glue on both ends of the domino and then I place the domino in the routed hole. Even though I use dominoes, I still put glue on the end of the miters to ensure that everything stays together. To clamp up miters, you can glue temporary blocks on the corners, but I find that using these variable angle band clamps to be indispensable. They really pull everything together nice and tight, and if your miters are cut correctly, you won't have any gaps. My only issue is that I had to buy another set because I only had one, but I had two picture frames, so I had to let the first one dry before I could clamp up the second one. After the glue dried, I sanded the surfaces with 120, 150, and 180 grit on my orbital sander. I broke the edges just using some 220 grit because I really like the look of these crisp edges instead of a traditional roundover. I find using 220 grit paper does a good job of this. Just a few swipes is all it takes. To add a nice contrasting background to the artwork, I dyed a piece of 8th inch plywood using black ink. I've used this product before in the past and it does an excellent job. And this brings me to today's sponsor, StainPad. These revolutionary microfiber pads really are the perfect staining pad. 
The foam core holds a lot of finish and the microfiber outer layer lays it down really smooth. The coolest feature is you can cut them to any size you want. For applying the ink, I cut a small piece to size because that's all it takes. So each pad will yield up to 8 pieces, 16 pieces total per package. Not only do I use it for staining, I also really like using them for applying my wiping varnishes. Super smooth, no fuzz left behind, snag resistant, and no streaks. You can buy these applicators at your local Rockler store and on Amazon. I will leave a link below for you to check them out. After the ink dried, I sprayed two coats of a water-based poly on both of the artwork as well as the backer board. Next, I finished the frames again using the stain pad applicator. I applied a coat of the Osmo Pollux and after a few minutes of letting it soak in, I removed the excess finish using a cheesecloth. I didn't want a flashy, shiny finish for the frames, just something to darken the cherry and the walnut with a satin slash flat appearance. I wanted the artwork to do all of the talking. To assemble the frame, I first started by cleaning the glass since it's easier to access this way. Next, I put the glass in, followed by the artwork, and then the dyed backer board. To secure everything, I installed four picture frame turn buttons, one in each corner, and then I installed a sawtooth picture frame hanger on the top of the frame, centered. And that's it. These frames are easy to knock out in a weekend and look great. The key with these frames, in my opinion, is to look very minimal slash modern in appearance, and I think they came out perfect. The cherry will darken with age and only continue to look better. The walnut with its straight grain and color also looks nice. I've already had my mom over and she picked the cherry frame, so I'm going to be hanging the walnut frame in my office. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a thing or two, and I'll see you in the next build video.